And for every kid, guess what? That place is a little different. Some kids need that little gentle nod. Some <coughs> kids literally need to be pulled back. I'll try anything. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a kid who chronically does not like to take risks. Yeah. Can you work on risk taking in other parts of this life too? And point out what's the worst thing that could happen. Okay. High school junior in my office yesterday. I must have said five times. Fifty years from now, no one will know the difference about mm -hmm. all of this. Find me at some kid. Gifted kid to five repetitions. Okay. <laughs> Another question. Yes. Well, I actually had a comment. My daughter was very much risk resistant. Resistant. Mm -hmm. And she went as a reporter. Ah. And she only had to report to her teacher privately. Ah. But so she got to sit, observe, do nothing, not answer any questions, not anything. So she got to report. That's an awesome idea. See how much you help each other. Thank you. You know, that's the other thing. Strengthen, some of us have been there before and can give suggestions to each other. That's great. There's no risk really there. You're just, you're just going to report. And by the way, maybe the next day you'll report and do some one thing. And pretty soon the kid will be slid in. And, and then the learning opportunity in the end is to say, see, you did not die. <laughs> You're still alive and eating at my dinner table. <laughs> yes? As a follow-up to that on the idea of supporting each other, I wonder if you have examples or know of local groups of parents who have come together to create environments for their children to play together, help each other. To oh, okay. For the children. So not like we have to drive out to Waukesha or something, but just within my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do any of you have, I'm on the south side, and I'm not aware of any groups still in our way, uh, except in formal groups where parents get together. Anything up here on the north side? Well, even in formal groups, like what do those groups do? How do they function? How yeah. Do they how do they find each other? I'll tell you, the kids often find each other and the girls hang out with them. <laughs> I would also highly recommend that you follow page events. Go to the page website, because every year we offer three or four things that get families together. And the kids hang out and the girls often hang out and, and get some good face-to-face -face time with other girls. Um, I know this year we're going to have, besides this evening, we're going to have uh, an opportunity here in January, and that will be a one-stop shopping, and I'm sure I don't know the date. I'd have to look at my calendar. But check the page calendar. It's in February, I want to say. It's Saturday, it's 10 or 2. Um, at Marquette. The 9th. The 9th of February. At Marquette from 10 to 2. One-stop shopping for lots of things that you can do with your child. Uh, clubs, groups, activities, uh, Leagues, Lego League, that kind of thing. Um, then also, I know that in um, sometime in the winter, usually March, we have this really cool evening called Unplugged Trivia. And it's usually out in Waukesha. And kids are put on teams. These are fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And they may not use electronic devices, but it's a basic trivia contest, kind of like Jeopardy, with ring and buzzers and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's competitive, but there's no trophies or anything like that. It's mostly for fun. We laugh a lot. You know, uh, the girls try and play along, and we have to tell them to be quiet. Um, we think maybe we have to have a grown-up room, just for grown-ups. But it's an awesome evening for kids to get with other kids like themselves. We also play human scrabble, which is great fun. Kids have to find other kids and make words that are worth certain amounts of points and stuff like that. There will be another activity in the spring. We're still trying to determine exactly what that will be. Sometimes it's a writing night. Sometimes it's an artist night. We've had comedy sports in. Um, we're thinking about maybe some kind of engineering night. That is still in the planning stage with Pace. But that's a great place to hang out and to have your kids hang out. And sometimes hundreds of kids show up for these activities. Great question. I thought you were going to ask about parents. Um, from time to time, we want to uh, SANG group, Supporting Emotional Needs of Gifted Group. That's for parents and guardians. And you'll kind of have to keep your ear to the ground um, in your school district to see if there's a group starting up. It's generally facilitated by two adults who have been trained. And my husband and I are some of the trainers. Jenny, are you certified? I'm not. Okay. Um, there are a number of us in the area who have been trained. And now I'm a trainer of some of these people. And basically, it's parents helping parents. Kind of what Beth did here, giving ideas and suggestions to each other. 
with a trained facilitator to make sure that everyone's needs are met in the group. Great questions. Anything else? Still have time to get home for the debate. <laughs> Yeah, um, do I? I can suggest some things that are really awesome for kids. Um, certainly lessons of, of some kind. Um, I have a special place in my heart for the Milwaukee Children's Chorus, mostly because I sing with the adult version. I sing with the Milwaukee Symphony Chorus, and those little ones grow up to be people like me, okay? Um, I would go to the Wisconsin Music Association's website. I know that they have some things. Some of the websites I gave you earlier have links to like games, toys that go with music. Um, the NAGC, National Association for Gifted Children, also put out like a Christmas list, you know, of like gifts for kids that should be coming out. It's not out already, I didn't check recently. But really cool ideas of good games. Another thing I want to recommend you to is a, a graduate of South Milwaukee High School, Gordon Lugauer, runs Board Game Barrister at Bayshore Mall. Great board game shop, and Gordon's a boot. You know, go in there and check out those board games. Um, he'll show you how to play anything. It's awesome. And, and tell him drummer said to. We had a bet on him. He's a highly gifted kid. Walked around all through high school with his backpack taped with uh, duct tape, and we had a bet in the faculty lounge whether or not that backpack would make it until his senior year. And it did. <laughs> okay, anything else? Yes? Can you give us any guidance on what's reasonable to expect the school to provide in terms of enrichment as opposed to what you should be doing as a parent at home? I find that quite hard to know. Like, am I being unreasonable in what I think should be happening in the classroom? Yeah, and you know, it is situational. Um, how do I say this? One of the things that we're thinking a lot about in gifted education right now is campus norms. And campus norms means what's reasonable in your school. So for example, I'm going to use two schools in my school district of South Milwaukee. I have one school that's relatively affluent. And it's pretty solidly a middle class school. And then I have another school that is pretty poverty based, 83% poverty. Those two schools have kind of different needs. Their kids have different needs. So what is enrichment in one building might not look exactly the same in the other building. Just like what you need in some of your schools might be different than what I consider need in South Milwaukee. We are thinking a lot about what do kids need and how do we provide it? And remember, you're all folks, you know, um, I just read today, 174 of the 425 school districts in the state of Wisconsin are taking a budget cut. We're getting less money this year than we got last year. 60-some percent less. So we're trying to do more and more with less and less. Yes? K-5. The law is does not say anything about K-4, and in fact, that's a pretty recent phenomenon. K-4 has not been around forever. So, this the law was um, amended on uh, April Fool's Day. I thought that was kind of funny. 2008. <laughs> I was like, seriously, April Fool's Day. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, I'll stick around. You've been wonderful. Thank you. I hope I kept you entertained and thinking and uh, you've got some strategies to take home or to your classes. Have a great evening.